Alright, so what is up guys? In this video I'll be going over very briefly what a lifecycle component is and how you can use it in Android Studio to make your life a lot easier and to make your code a lot cleaner. So let's get started immediately by demonstrating in this test app what we can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on I am a button and it will give you this toast. So, so far everything looks normal. Now let's click on the square and it will say preparing to exit app. And if we click on the screen again, it will say retrieving data and everything will work as you have seen it. So what you have may noticed already are the life cycles being handled in the app. And this video is going to be addressing exactly that. There's not too much to show in this demonstration app, but so let's dive straight into the code so you can see what I'm talking about. So the first thing we want to do is go to our Android Studio project and go to our Gradle scripts and click on build.gradle. And then right below, we are going to paste in this dependency for life cycles only without the view model or the live data. And it will be a version 2.2.0, but of course that might change by the time you are watching this video. But as soon as we've pasted that in, we can go ahead and click on sync now and wait for it to sync. And as soon as it has finished syncing, we are going to go ahead and close this Gradle scripts folder and go to our res folder, open the layout and the activity underscore main XML and switch to the split screen. Inside here, I'm just gonna paste in my button from earlier. And the important part to note here is that I gave it an ID of button underscore button, and I gave it a text of I am a button. And right after, we will go to our Java folder, click on com, and where it says our project name, we will right click and add a new Kotlin class, and we will call this my observer. And inside here, we're going to set up the my observer class, and this is what is going to actually take note of what happens in the activity we specify. And this is where we will define all our lifecycle events. So right here we can type in class my observer and we're going to give it a few parameters. So we're going to go private val context, which should be of type context. And we'll add a private val of lifecycle and give it a lifecycle. And this whole class is going to extend a lifecycle observer this one right over here. And now that we have done that, you will see that we have imported successfully these two components from Android X. So we can start using that immediately. So the next step is to add some lifecycle events. And to do this, all we have to do is start with an annotation, which will say on lifecycle event. And then we have to add a set of parentheses. And inside here, we'll write lifecycle dot event and on create. And as you can see, it gave you actually an entire list of options. So you can actually pick any one you want. There's on destroy, on stop, on pause, on create, on resume, and on any, which I will explain very briefly in a moment. So we'll just start with on create, and we will create the function right below, which is function on create, and we are going to add a log. I guess it would be better actually to create a variable up here, so we're going to write uh, private val tag, and that's going to equal my observer. Then we can go down here and type in log i, and we're going to add the tag, and just copy and paste this section over here so we can tell when it gets called. So this will add a log every single time we call on create on our main activity. So when we start the app, you'll see that this log will pop up and you can do this for the, all the other lifecycle events as well. I'm just going to paste in what I had from earlier and let's just import toast. I will explain what that is in a moment. But as you can see, the second one is lifecycle event on start, which gets called immediately after on create. Then we have lifecycle event on resume on pause, on stop, and on destroy. So all of these are going to get called eventually through the main activity lifecycle. What the lifecycle component does is helps us simplify what happens in our main activity by providing us another class to store in all the relevant information we want when the application gets started, when, when the application gets paused, and when the application gets destroyed. So this is kind of like another layer where you can update different parts of your application. And of course it's recommended to leave the UI handling and data updating in different classes such as view models and repositories. But this is a great place to add other lines of code and to set a call to update the data. And in addition to adding logs to each one of them to see what they do in the log below, I also added a toast for our on resume and our on stop. And when we resume the app, it will, it will pretend to retrieve some data. And when we stop the app, it will say preparing to exit the app because this gets called right before on destroy. So you can put a lot of exiting code inside here and then on destroy will be called next and the app will be closed. And in addition to all the regular life cycles we are used to having in our Android application, they've also introduced the on any keyword. And this on life cycle event will take note of any life cycle that changes. So it will be called every single time on create is called, on start is called, on resume is called. It will be called on 
any lifecycle change. And I imagine that can be very useful for keeping something up to date, although I have not used it yet, so I'm just going to delete it for now because it will just clutter the logs. But uh, that's all we have to do in our my observer file. Now let's actually go to our main activity and set the observer to it so we can actually observe the lifecycle of this main activity. And to do that, we actually have to start by creating a private latent var. We're just going to name it my observer and it's going to be of type my observer. Then inside on create, we have to instantiate it. So we'll do my observer is going to equal my observer and we are going to pass in the context, which is main activity, also known as this. And we will type in the life cycle. Then all we have to do in here is add an observer to the life cycle of our main activity. And to do this, we just type in add observer and we add my observer as the observer. And there's one more function I want to show you before we actually run this app. And to demonstrate it, I will have to create a private function, which will be button pressed. And inside here, we'll get our button and set an on click listener. And here we will provide a check which says if lifecycle dot current state and we will use this is at least check and this will check whether the lifecycle state has achieved at least the current state so if we write lifecycle dot state dot started it will make sure that the lifecycle has at least reached the started state before executing any of the code within the block and if we successfully pass this check, we can successfully create this toast, which will take the application context as the context and a message that says, you can now download your music. And then of course, let's go and call this in our on create. So this check over here can be used to make sure that we've actually reached a current lifecycle state in our application. And it can help prevent us from calling certain items that should not be called before certain lifecycle states. But let's go ahead and run this application now that we've added all the necessary code. And as you can see, once it starts, it calls on resume. So it starts retrieving the data. When we click on the button, it will say you can now download your music. That is because we have passed the on create lifecycle state and we are well past the on start. We are currently on, on resume. So that means everything has loaded and we can successfully try to download music if there is music to be downloaded. And otherwise, if we try to exit our app, it will call on stop and it will say preparing to exit app. And now we can just exit the app and go back to our other application. So do whatever you want to do. But uh, with that being said, that's actually all I wanted to show you regarding the lifecycle component. It can be very useful if you want to clean your project a bit, because of course you can add a lot of necessary codes for uh, handling the lifecycle states inside here, which will definitely keep your main activity class a bit more clean. But other than that, uh, I believe I will see you guys in the next video. And in that video, we'll be covering the navigation components and it's a really cool addition to Android Studio. So definitely check it out. But uh, see you guys and take care.